Generative AI is taking the architecture world by storm, potentially revolutionizing how we visualize architecture, but I have never used it. I find the whole world of generative AI massively intimidating and overwhelming, but in this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions using a generative AI tool and basically look at whether I'd integrate it into my workflow and whether you should too. Welcome to the video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas Rountree. I'm an architecture designer and content creator. And if you're new, just hit that subscribe button, please. That'd be much, much appreciated. Generative AI has become a huge conversation within architecture for every stage of design process, from the conceptualizing to the design development, to the visualization and selling of our ideas and projects. However, I've always avoided it. I've never used it before in my life. To give you a bit of context, I've been within architecture for the past six years now. I'm almost qualified as an architect, but not quite yet. And my style is very much a post-produced, uh, post-digital style in the way that I communicate and stylize my drawings. As you can tell by these images, I'm very passionate about my graphic style, and it's very much inspired by Zaha Hadid, Emric Morales, Bernard Schumi, Daniel Liebskin, just to name a few. The generative AI tool that I'm going to use for this video is going to be Diffusion, which is a tool within a SketchUp subscription. You can download it off the extension warehouse. It uses text-based prompts and existing imagery to generate visualizations, and they are the sponsor of today's video. While they are sponsoring today's video, I'm definitely going to give an honest point of view and an honest first impressions of using an AI tool. Okay, so we're now in SketchUp, and as you can see here, I've got a model ready. It's kind of abstract conceptual pieces but this is the kind of level of model that i wanted to use to go into the ai see what i can produce with the diffusion software so for argument's sake let's say that this is a kind of community facility um on some kind of rock edge and that i want to integrate this more into the landscape and show more of the surrounding context with um i don't know maybe some trees and some rocks surrounding um this is kind of like a a community facility you've got this wing here maybe some kind of museum or art gallery uh, with these views over the back of the kind of rock face uh, you've got these kind of higher viewpoints to look over the panorama and then on the inside here you've got this kind of internal um, kind of courtyard external courtyard shall i say where maybe this is uh, some kind of gardens you've got some paving maybe this is some water or or something so we can just explore a couple of ideas so to open diffusion i've got it here on this tab uh, but i believe you just download it from the extension warehouse for free first things first it looks very kind of simple um you've got describe the image you would like to generate so i'm assuming this is where i kind of put my prompts um you then got styles oh, that's pretty pretty useful It'll be interesting to test what the kind of illustration or clay model or any of these actually look like. Settings, respect model, geometry, prompt. So I'm assuming if you're putting in your prompt text here, you can increase the influence of the prompt. Let's start with this one so we can get kind of a landscape shot. Okay, let's just say land, landscape, building, integrated into i'm not going to apply a style to begin with yeah i'm going to uh, maybe reduce that just to 50 50 for now reset that generate and let's just see what this does so from what i can gather from my research um a software like mid journey you need a pretty specific prompt and the more you develop the prompt uh, the better obviously the visualization that you'll get kind of straightforward stuff. So I'm going to approach this, I guess, in a similar way and see what this produces. And this is the kind of thing. I mean, that looks pretty, pretty good. The thing is, I don't see much rocks. They've kind of put it as if it's on a... That looks pretty good, though. That looks like a pretty nice, nice villa or something right on the edge of, the, of a lake, which is quite nice. And then... I believe if you keep this image here, you can then work further into the prompt and it will update the image rather than the model. So let's give that a go. Add mountains in the back, generate. Let's see what we get with that. Yeah, bingo, yeah, that's more like it. There we go. Nice. Looks good. It's actually, it's, it is actually mind blowing that with a couple pieces of a kind of text and a model 
and it picking up on the geometry of the model that it can produce something like this this quickly it is it's impressive um i think that's a really nice image i can if I add the scene i believe that it will actually bring it into here there you go look at that nice so that was a very quick test um and as you can see it's not entirely following the geometry of of the model uh, but it is kind of roughly it's using it as a guide uh, so let's now actually refresh it let's get out of this view and let's properly test it as if it was a drawing that i would produce for a project in my kind of architectural style my drawing style um following the likes of kind of zaha Hadid. let's try and push a little bit more about if we could do something potentially in a post-production style um and see how that would look it's a nice shot okay so let's say um Zaha Hadid Deconstructivist Let's just test that to begin with Bingo Nice Okay, so it hasn't quite picked up on the glazed roof So let's just add that to the scene so I can show you a bit better So yeah, this is the kind of style that we're going for As you can see, there's quite a lot of concrete Probably too much concrete these should all be kind of glazing, uh, so we'll try and get that out of here. This probably could be maybe um, kind of some kind of driveway or some open space. Maybe we can make this more of a green space. I like the sky. I think the sky looks nice. Potentially like that glazing a bit more. I like it. Got some windows on the left. Got the staircase coming up. Uh, let's maybe add some activity. Add mountains and trees. See what we get. So one thing I've already noticed with this software is that it's very, very easy. I mean, this is literally a 3D model. You could probably do something that is very, very basic and have diffusion as a tool. There we go. That's more like it. This is looking like something out of... I don't know, The Incredibles or something. Nice, okay. We're getting there. We're getting somewhere. I can't see the activity or, or people or cars. Um, but this is starting to kind of look nice. And maybe we could even change the concrete to kind of a timber. A concrete, let's do steel colonnade and a, and a timber Uvered sweeping roof. Okay, so the timber looks quite nice. I quite like the the change in materiality. There's a bit more of a hierarchy between uh, the imagery, which is nice. Um, you can see the glazing quite nicely. Um, and what I'm actually going to do now is we're going to go to the styles. I'm going to test out each style. So let's just do pencil sketch to begin with. Okay, this doesn't quite look sketchy yet. Oh, we've got a bird though. Let's have a look at the bird. There we go. The sketch isn't quite working. Let's try a different one. Let's do an illustration. Okay, so it's not really picking up on the illustration either, uh, which is odd unless I'm doing something wrong here. Illustration prompt. Yep, that isn't too strong either. Uh, but you can kind of see as I go through here, the different prompts given me a lot of different variations of a kind of similar image uh, but very different styles so you can kind of see the differences in the styles let's just for the fun of it let's drop the geometry down and increase the prompt influence let's do a little bit there we go this is more like it <laughs> nice okay that's pretty cool i like that let's save that image uh, and you can see that obviously the level of influence that the prompt has you can increase massively which kind of drastically changes the form of the building um and the kind of language of the sketchup model which is obviously great in a kind of development stage or conceptual stage because you can really explore some ideas and push them through this so here are just a few other things that i've just been playing around with uh you've got this view here which is quite nice you can see i've got kind of like a a metal glossy finish it finish to it and the lighting is quite a nice orange. Another Zaha inspired. And this one to finish up, which I think is quite nice. 
So my first impressions is that I think generative AI is massively impressive. I think it is absolutely mind blowing that you can literally have a model that you've created no matter what level of detail and that you can then write a sentence of what you want that image to be and it will create it within seconds. I think that is pretty impressive. It's, it's kind of mind blowing how it works. It's kind of scary, kind of intimidating and everything that I said at the start of the video, but it's impressive and I think that it is a very powerful tool to use. As a novice to AI, I think the Diffusion software is a very good software to use because it's very, very simple. It has a very simple and easy to use interface. You can literally set up your, your model, set up the view, type in what you want, type in the style, and there you have it. You have some visualizations. And I think it's a very powerful tool. And I would definitely, if you're looking to get into architecture, AI and using AI to generate your images, I think it's a very good kind of point of entry into the whole world of AI. I think it's really useful that it's actually linked into the software. So you can kind of live move around the, the model, make sure that you're setting up your scenes correctly, and then link it straight into the AI, uh, the generative AI tool, which I think is really powerful because you can kind of then work between the two things, which I think is a really great tool to have. And especially with something like AI that is so overwhelming and intimidating i think having such a simple interface between model and imagery i think is really really useful and having that really kind of simple interaction is key although i think it's a great software and it's very easy to use and it's very quick i don't think the images that it created were as the were at the quality that i would use for a final image if you think to the projects that we we sell at university or or a practice level to clients they need to be very high level imagery and high level um, kind of visualization showing all of the materiality showing all of the composition and the activity of the spaces and i just don't think the the visuals that they were creating were quite at that level yet i mean you can take the visuals out go into post-production start adding people start adding textures layers etc and i think that's when ai and this generative ai tool becomes really powerful when you integrate it into your workflow and not actually use it as the final image I think that's how we need to approach generative AI personally from my point of view. I think it's definitely more of a tool that is integrated into the design workflow, into your communication workflow, rather than it being the end destination, rather it being the end point. I think the power in all of this and the power of a tool like Diffusion is throughout the design process. And for example, if you have a very kind of brief concept and you want to begin to explore what that could look like or how you want to develop it further and developing that concept into some kind of building or some type, uh, type of architectural form this is where the prompts this is where the quick visualization and testing of imagery i think is extremely powerful so will i be integrating it into my workflow i think so i think it's definitely a great tool to use Pr kind of covering all the previous points that i've said it's definitely a powerful tool to integrate it into different stages of your workflow. I wouldn't use it as my final piece just yet. I'm sure there probably are some tools out there that are probably more powerful and they go into more detail and they get a lot more out of the prompts, etc. But I think currently I probably wouldn't use it, especially because my kind of drawing style is very post-produced, very post-digital. It's not quite there yet in terms of me having and creating something completely and entirely from uh, a visualization tool such as um, Diffusion, or an AI generative tool such as Diffusion. But yeah, that is my first impressions. That's my first take of using AI in my workflow. I think you guys should use it personally. I think you should at least test it out. So yeah, definitely check out Diffusion and thank you for sponsoring today's video. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash the button, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace.